Hello everyone and welcome to this first session of the Arduino tutorial series. Now what I want to do in this first session is I want to kind of lay out uh, the format of the future sessions in this uh, Arduino tutorial series. We're also going to, in this session, we're going to cover off how to get started with your Arduino and how to connect it to your PC because believe it or not there's quite a few challenges which you could face there. I want to talk about the alternatives to Arduino and I want to cover off kind of the philosophy surrounding Arduino and, and then perhaps the use of my forum and how that can be useful and what have you. So first of all let's um, cover off the alternatives to Arduino because I know in the previous videos that I did people mentioned that there are clones of the Arduino and other other microprocessor uh, platforms which can be used for uh, this kind of development uh, environment. And yes indeed there are, and that's one of the philosophies when this was developed, it was developed as an open source environment. So anyone can copy and clone the Arduino board, and people obviously have done. So what I would say to you is that there are quite a few challenges being faced even using the genuine, so-called genuine Arduino boards. That if you are going to use a clone, then just do your research and make sure that it is 100% compatible um, with Ar Arduino and the uh, code and what have you. Because that might pose a few challenges for you if there are some issues there. Then as I said, there are other hardware platforms. Um, which have been developed, which are in fact in many ways far better than the microprocessor which you get on your Arduino. And I'm, I'm sure that in time to come I might, might start playing around with those too. But the reason I kind of uh, have started off with Arduino, I think a lot of people start off with Arduino, and why I think it's a good starting place for a lot of people is that. There is a lot of support for Arduino in terms of the add-on kit, the projects and code which has already been written, um, the add-ons and what have you are numerous. The forums to help you if you get stuck, the tutorials. So if you're a beginner and, kind of, and need a fair bit of help getting started, then that's why I think our Arduino is a good place to start. I think if you become fairly advanced and are going to get into serious microprocessor development and what have you, then you will move on from Arduino because then it, there are certain limitations which might hamstring you if you stick with this platform. That being said, if you go and search the net and have a look at the projects which have been done with Arduino, I think you'll be very surprised at what has been done and achieved with this little board. Right, so before we get stuck into uh, understanding more about Arduino it itself, what I want to explain and go through is kind of my philosophy and the way I'm going to approach this tutorial series, and then also talk a little bit about the kind of what I'd call the Arduino philosophy uh, as well. Now, there are loads of tutorials on how to get started with Arduino. And if you're after the little quick videos which talk you through some code and how to do flashing lights and what have you, then certainly I'd say don't waste your time on, on my videos because that's not what they're going to be about. I'm sincerely hoping to do more real world tutorial where I'm not going to try and spoon feed you and talk you through some code on a screen because I don't believe you're going to learn that way. The best way you're going to learn is by trying things yourself banging your head and learning through that process and in fact I mean that's in this past week with my playing with Arduino that's exactly how I've uh, learned a fair bit um, so I'm going to walk you through the potential stumbling blocks the, the, the big stumbling blocks which might trip you up because there are some stumbling blocks out there which may get you so uh, so frustrated that you just want to chuck it in a drawer and, and, and leave it and there again is I want to warn you that if if you don't have the patience to endure some of the stumbling blocks or what have you, then perhaps Arduino isn't the platform to you. In my mind, it's a, it's a fun engineering uh, platform which involves a lot of troubleshooting. So it involves a lot of troubleshooting to get to your, your end result, potentially. Because even if you do know how to 
code or write the programs or scripts and put the little hardware bits and pieces together, there will still be some bits along the way which are potentially going to trip you up, as I've come to discover. When we, st when we st in series two, in the second episode of this, I'm going to actually go through my first project. And that project is a simple voltmeter, but I've added some functionality uh, with min-max average. And even that little exercise has revealed a lot to me in terms of limitations within the code and the libraries that you get with uh, Arduino, even the display units. And that is something I'm going to highlight. I mentioned that, like for instance, you get these LCD displays. And I said I've gone for the serial enabled one because you don't need so many wires to connect it up and what have you. Boy oh boy does this pose a few challenges which I'll talk about in the second episode when we do that uh, voltmeter project. So as I said I'm going to talk through those things and try and show you real world issues which hopefully will help you. I'm also going to try and give you the kind of impetus or act as the catalyst to jump into interesting projects yourself because as I said that is the way you learn. So there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of showing you bits and pieces. Uh, these videos might be a bit longer than the normal quick tutorials, other tutorials you're going to see. But as I said, it's going to be more, uh, hopefully full of the more real world stuff uh, and also jumping into some of the actual bigger projects. Like as I said, there'll be the voltmeter I want to challenge do. There are folks on my forum like Warwick who's doing an MPP MPPT charge controller. I want to do that as well. There's a digital thermometer with let's say logging to uh, memory and all of those those projects are going to bring up some potential challenges and some interesting ways of working with Arduino. Also just the code. You, one, you can write code for Arduino in a certain way and there may be some particular functionality and ways of doing things better or more efficiently. I'm going to try and cover that off as well. Um, and hopefully it's going to be an interactive and learning experience for myself and those people involved who follow this series. So let's also get stuck down into the philosophy of Arduino, which I believe is very is important because it's a lot of it's got to do with the philosophy and the way I run my kind of channel and my forum. Now as I said, Arduino was developed as a kind of open source uh, platform and to that end it, it in essence is trying to draw in a community of people who, who are going to help each other share I and share ideas. And I do believe that as the, the developers have made this kind of open source and a sharing thing, I think Along with that comes the acknowledgement of what they provided to the electronics community and acknowledgement of other people's work. So it's one thing I always want to try, I'm going to try and do myself and I urge you to do as well, is that once you start getting into um, either writing your own code or grabbing ideas off the internet, because that will be one of the big things. You'll see a piece of code, let's say for this voltmeter, you'll see a piece of code, or we'll called a sketch, on the internet, you'll go and grab it and you'll put it into your Arduino program or IDE, your compiler, and you may make a few tweaks to it and go, yes, look, this is my piece of code. But there, what you should do is if you've taken someone else's concept or their code and made some adjustments to it, you should acknowledge them in the code itself. I think that's quite important in that if you give acknowledgement to the original person who came up with the code and you can then add your name as the person who's added updates or modifications to the code. Um, if you go and write a whole piece of code yourself because it's an idea you came up with or it's a totally fresh new piece of code, well then guess what? You can claim um, the, the kind of rights to that piece of code and hopefully you'll go and share it so that other people can benefit as well. So that's kind of the, certainly the um, uh, Arduino philosophy that I hope people are going to follow. Okay, and as much as I I really do hope that you will uh, use my forum as a place to share your ideas and your projects related to Arduino, I'd be the first one to admit that let's say for instance you're having problem with a piece of code and you're getting errors or what have you, 
I'm certainly not going to have the time to go through those and troubleshoot them because some problems can be so unique to the hardware and the libraries and what have you that you're using it can be very difficult to troubleshoot and there are loads of forums out there on the internet I'm going to place a few links below to the, the few key areas where there's a brilliant community that can go and try and assist you with that with those issues there aren't enough people in my forum dedicated to uh, let's say Arduino coding that I, th I think you might get the help that you need but by all means if you've uh, got a great piece of code that works and a great project put it there if you do have a challenge that you you want help with post it there and see if you can get the help but I'd say there certainly are uh, better uh, there are far many far more other people involved in other forums that are going to help you with that right so let's try and get stuck into the basics of getting started I'm going to go through the process of how you connect your Arduino uh, to your computer because as I said that poses quite a few challenges it, it hung me up for a day very silly issue but it's one of those issues I think that can potentially catch quite a few people out I'm also going to put the Arduino on the bench now and just quickly give a description of uh, what it's all about that's the basic uh, Arduino and some handy tips uh, for when you get started as well in terms of having some insulation or some pads underneath we'll talk about that and then also before we get through to all of that you can, I'm going to re be referring to some bits and pieces that comes out of this getting started with our Arduino book. This is um, written by um, Massimo Banzi, if I've got it correct. He's the, one of the co-founders of Arduino. This book and all the Arduino starter kits and hardware is available on my Amazon store. You don't have to buy it there. It shouldn't cost you any more, but I certainly get a commission if you do, so it certainly supports these shows and what I'm doing. So again, that it's great if you can buy it there because it certainly does help. Right, let's go have a look at the bench and have a closer look at the actual hardware itself and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about the board. Okay, so here we have our kind of most, the one of the kind of basic Arduino um, boards to start out with. This is the Arduino Uno and this is revision 3. So you'll often see it sold as Arduino Uno R3. There are bigger uh, boards that you can start off with, they obviously cost a bit more money. The, the, what happens in the bigger boards, you get, um, they have a different microprocessor on them and they will have more, often will have more memory that you can store uh, bigger sketches or bigger programs and you can store more data. But this certainly uh, is a good, uh, if you're trying to get into it and see if you're going to enjoy it, it's a good way to start. Also, the bigger boards have um, more input and output. You'll see the, the strip along the sides here. These enable you to talk to the Arduino, in essence, and for the Arduino to talk back to you through a whole realm of lights and sensors and what have you. So let's, before we even get down to the basic hardware description of the board, I'm going to give you the one thing that you can do to start off with. And don't look at my un my untidy implementation but what you might want to do is put either get some four rubber um, feet underneath your Arduino board because more than likely you're going to be resting it on on surfaces and for one it might skid around which which doesn't help it also if you've got the USB into it to power it and to program it um, it then does get a bit skittish if you've got a heavy, a thicker um, USB cable. Also, if you're resting it like I do sometimes on top of my computer or something metallic, the last thing you want is the underside of the PCB and uh, where the through-hole components come through to short. So this provides it with, it prevents it from skidding around and it insulates the bottom of the board. And I would highly recommend do whether you put a stick-on, stick-on foam pad like I have or the rubber feet, certainly something to do. What you may, what I found was on these big, on the USB input here and on the power jack, the tabs, the through, the piece that comes through the PC board was a fair bit longer than the rest. So I got a pair of good sharp side cutters and when I say do get a good pair of sharp side cutters because the uh, 
bits that come through are quite thick and I snipped those off so again they weren't protruding that much so it made it far easier to stick the pad on and you've got again if, even if you've got rubber feet you've got better clearance on the board so that's one of the first handy tips then okay so let's have a quick look at the Arduino as I say I'm starting out myself if I if anyone comes across uh, any mistakes that I made or what have you please let me know and I'll annotate um, because I say this is a learning process for me as well. Now, first of all, the Arduino can be powered either by the USB. If you've got it connected to your PC, it'll be powered by the 5 volts from your uh, PC, or it, it can accept a DC uh, power input over here through this jack, and you can buy a wall warts or what have you. I tend to have a, um, a battery or a lithium battery pack which I plug in there so at least it's mobile so that's the one handy thing to think about. Just a simple 9 volt battery with a power jack is, is the one easy way to power it. it. There's a range of voltages that it works off but can work up to 12 volts if I remember correctly but I think the best recommended voltage is 9 volts so I'd stick with 9 volts for powering it in, in the jack. Also on these boards you will note there are a few, a couple of versions or later uh, versions of this board where they have a surface mount chip. And I've mentioned this before, my recommendation is to not go with a surface mount chip because if you happen to make a mistake and blow something, the one component you're likely to blow is the microprocessor. And with the SMD chip, the surface mount chip on the board, you're basically going to end up throwing away the whole board. Whereas on this configuration with the DIP or the dual inline package, you can simply remove the microprocessor and slot a new one in. It's a far more efficient and cheaper way um, to get round a little whoopsie. Right, so then on the board we've discussed the, the chip and the inputs. Now let's discuss the kind of may, main input output on it. Down the side, this side here, you, there is a ground and then we've got uh, pins which are numbered from 13 down to 0. And these are mainly your digital input and output. And when I say input or output, as you'll realize when we get to start uh, writing code for this, you can define whether a pin acts as an input or an output. And, and obviously you need to define it or else the Arduino is going to get confused and not know what you want to do on that pin. So that is the digital input and output. It's also got some PWM pulse width modulation input and output as well. Then on this side, we've got where you, you can draw power, either a 3.3 volt or 5 volt and the ground respective to that. And then you've got um, some analog input. Now the analog input is in the project which we're going to first start off with the voltmeter in fact that is where we're going to be putting our input and just to tell you a little about the analog input it's remember computers operate in ones and zeros so they are digital so although it says analog these analog inputs take an analog input and digitize it so basically if you put in a 5 volt signal in in, in here which is changing then it'll represent it as a number between 1 and 1023. So in essence it, it creates a, a digital representation of an analog signal going in there. Not critical to know at this point in time, it's just a little bit of background. On the digital one on the digital inputs, they rely on either being high or low, representing either a one or a zero. So you're very basic, you uh, digital input or output into the computer world and the microprocessor. Right, so the next thing is then to connect the Arduino to your PC. So before you even start downloading uh, the IDE, the IDE is the compiler program, we'll go through that terminology and what have you when I've got it up on the PC for you to understand. You want, you're going to want to connect your Arduino to your PC with your USB cable. So the USB cable is obviously plugged into my PC already. I'm then going to connect this into the Arduino. And up front, what, what we're going to do, I'm going to change over to a screen capture program so you can actually see what's going on on the PC. Now, what is going to happen virtually on all PCs, Windows based PCs, when you plug this in, it's going to 
see the hardware, it's going to try and install the driver and it's going to fail. And that's the part I want to help you through because there's a few basic steps and if you go slightly wrong, uh, you might really frustrate yourself. Also, some of the instructions I've seen on the Arduino site and the internet don't exactly describe what potentially might happen on your PC and I'm going to try and walk you through those as best I can. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is actually download the Arduino software. Now, the if you go to the if you just simply do a search on of Arduino in Google, you're bound to come across the site over here. But here's the address: it's Arduino.cc, and you'll get to the home page here. Here is a really useful. Uh, spot for finding projects and assistance on in forums if you do have any problems so this is certainly a very handy resource there's loads of them but this is the main Arduino one then what you're going to do is you're going to click on the download link and this is the software which allows you to compile your programs it's called the IDE it's where you write your sketches or your code or your program and they've got several versions of the IDE. Now the latest one that's available you'll see here is Arduino 1.0.1. .1. So I'd suggest downloading this one and depending on your platform obviously I can only help you with uh, the Windows side of it. You click on Windows and it's going to download a zip file and that zip file you just ex extract the files in that zip file to a folder of your choice. Now before we move away, I just want to show you there are other versions, older versions. Here's 1.0, then there's 0.023, 0.022. And I have found that th what they've done, they've added certain functionality and what have you as the in the later versions. Often they're not backwards compatible. So what I'm trying to find out for myself and all and all highlight to yourselves is if there's a piece of code which doesn't work. In let's say the latest version of Arduino 1.01 then I might say you need to either install or load 0.023 or 0.022 I'd say if you want to ensure you're fairly compatible the safest version to go with is either 0.022 or 0.023 because a lot of the code that I found uh, has been written in that but just be aware, if you are having problems, it's worthwhile trying one of the older versions. So once you've downloaded the software, you can then install it into a folder. Now, again, the, the structure is entirely up to you, but I've got a, a folder on my hard drive called Arduino. Under there, I've got a folder called Software Arduino, and I've got all the versions of the software. Now, you don't actually have to install the software, so that's the beauty of of Arduino. You don't, there's no installation program. Once you've got the folder extracted, you will probably end up with a folder structure just like this over here. And this is your main editor or your IDE as they call it where you write your code. And all you have to do is literally right click and send it to your desktop or what have you or wherever you like running your programs from. Because all you do need to do is execute that to actually um, write, start writing your programs. I'm going to start highlighting when we start getting to the first project there are uh, certain libraries or what have you if you want to add um, bits of hardware like that uh, serial enabled LCD display then we're going to talk about what happens under the libraries but the critical part now is you've got the Arduino.exe and the drivers and the drivers is what we're going to need to be able to install the actual Arduino itself so once you've got that there we can then go to the device manager okay so I've got you on my desktop now and I'm using Windows 7 but these things are fairly similar in uh, Windows XP so if you go to my computer the quick way to open device manager is just to right click and then go and click on manage then you'll get your device manager opening up and so click on device manager I'm going to minimize those network adapters there now here is where the challenges come. At the moment I've got the Arduino unplugged and what I'm going to do, I'm going to maximize the ports and COM LPT. I'm going to plug in, 
There we go, you might have heard the noise. Well, I plugged in the Arduino Uno R3 and it happens to come up on, on COM5. Now the challenge here is that it's sometimes on some PCs it'll come up under ports common LPT and others it'll come up straight under user PC where my mouse is now as a USB device. Now the reason it's coming up and showing all fine is obviously because I've got the, the drives installed. But what you need to be aware of is that sometimes when you plug it in, I say, because it doesn't come up under uh, common LPT, which is often where the documentation says it will, it can get rather confusing and you might be led down a line like I did, thinking I need there was something wrong and I needed to install ports and common LPT. But don't get caught up by that. When your drivers are installed, it will either come up pitch up under here or it will be directly under user PC. You just look for where you get um, the kind of USB unrecognized or unknown USB device and that's where you're going to uh, go and check and try and install the drivers. So I'm now going to try and emulate. Um, I'm going to remove the device from myself and then emulate uh, installing it for the first time. Okay, so let's go for a real-world run then of what happens when you first plug in your Arduino. So as you'll note, there's no, nothing under the devices or ports here. Uh, there's nothing under user PC. We've got, you've obviously downloaded and extracted your uh, Arduino files to a folder that you know about. I'm now going to plug in the Arduino and just note what happens. As you can see, it says installing device driver software it comes up as an unknown device and look at the next message which hopefully will come up I'm not sure there we go device driver was not successfully installed and this is probably what's going to happen to yourselves now then what you need to do is you click on the device unknown device and as you can see it's not under ports com or LPT because often they say go look there but as you can see it's directly under under user PC in my case. But obviously you can see it's got the yellow exclamation that says unknown device. So what you do is right click, go update device driver. Don't search automatically update driver, you go for the manual option. Now obviously in XP this screen looks different but you've got to go for the manual option. Now you've got to browse to this folder here. Now this is quite important. I'm going to click the browse button and under here you can see I've got my software Arduino and there's a drivers folder now under the drivers folder you've got this FTDI USB drivers now if you happen to go and click on that the computer will accept your setting because there's files in there it believes it can use but it will fail and this can seriously won't be a waste of time for yourself it was for me so do not click on this folder here you can see OK is highlighted if I go and click on um, it'll here it'll let you accept but I know on XP it kind of either highlights or allows you to select when you shouldn't when you can or can't but you have to select drivers not that one okay so you click OK so you've got that folder there include folders is selected you click next windows can't verify it comes with that just say install this driver anyway and there we go it says it's found it and it's got your arduino uno r3 so we click close and abracadabra if everything's worked okay you'll see it then pitch up uh, either under your ports common LPT or under user PC. I think by default once all the drivers are installed it pitches up under here but as I said if you've got a problem it normally isn't under here it's sitting under the uh, PC. Okay so that means now hopefully that's given you the right information to get the driver installed because then you're ready to actually use the editing software. Okay so we've got the drivers installed you've got your Arduino connected via the USB port Hopefully you've created a shortcut or you've got a link to that Arduino software. I've got it on my desktop over here. So now you're ready to start playing. So if we double click on this software. Now this software, again, so let me, let me go through some of the terminology. This is called the IDE. 
Um, I think the IDE stands for Interactive Development Environment and all it basically is is a, an editor which allows you to compile your code or your program or in Arduino speak your sketch uh, so that you can write your code to upload to the microprocessor. This will then, come once you've got your code written, this will compile it into the right code for your Arduino microprocessor to understand and process and run. Right, so we've got this open. Um, what you can do straight off is under here, if you go to File, Example, this comes with built-in sample sketches for you to start get you going straight away. So I'm going to leave you with this so that you can test that you get the basics going before we get into the first project which I'll walk you through where we talk about uh, a sketch or code structure and variables and all that kind of thing we'll do in the next one. But if you go here you've got 01 basics and if you go along go to the really basic one this one that says blink and this does the LED blink as I said I'm not I'm not going to cover these in detail because they all over the internet and they're right here and as you can see it brings up um, in the IDE the code I'm going to let me just make it a little bit bigger we will start we will discuss the whole layout of uh, the code if you understand or have worked with Pascal or Turbo Pascal or C this is has got the basic structure of that where you define your variables, you have functions, and you call variables and all that kind of thing. But that's what we'll cover off uh, as soon as we start getting into the projects. But here you go. You've got the code to make an LED blink on your Arduino. Now the R3 actually has a built-in LED. Uh, I'm we can upload this and test it, and I'll just show you uh, the on the board itself. So here we've got some uh, instructions where you can verify, upload, you can save your sketches if you go to save as um, you click that button it checks the code that you've written uh, is formatted correctly and whether you've got any issues or not and it'll highlight them in a window down here if it's come up okay you can then click this upload button you don't have to do that verify when you when you when you click the upload button it actually checks to checks the code and it'll throw up an error there as well now if everything is correct it'll upload correctly you can see here mine says Arduino Uno on, on, on COM5 so if we go to, to uh, tools and we go to board the one thing you need to check if you've got any errors and it's not seeing your board straight away is to go and select for one that which whatever board you're using over here and then two select the serial port now as you can see I've got a number of serial ports you'll have to check in your device manager which serial port your Arduino connected to. But once you've got all this set up correctly, if you ever didn't upload, then it should, once these comms are correctly in place, it should upload the code as it did there. And as you saw that upload uh, completed successfully, and I'll show you now what happens once that happens. Okay, so you've got your code uploaded for that first blinky blink. Um, I've got my Arduino plugged in. Obviously, the code has just been uploaded, and if you can see, there is the onboard LED which is doing the flash that the code is telling it to do. Now, what you can do, even though these have an onboard LED, um, on this top row over here, there is a pin labeled ground, and then there's pin 13. And in that in that sketch in that program, you'll see it has a reference to pin 13. And if you take a normal LED, the longer leg is the positive, so that goes to pin 13, the, the shorter one goes to ground. And if you plug that in, then you get your flashing LED there. Now, on this board, the voltage and resistors to, to operate this LED on here are obviously built in. Once we start getting to other projects, we need to be careful about uh, having the right resistors and what have you to operate things outside of Arduino. But we'll cover that off as we get into the other projects. So the one last thing I wanted to highlight before we wrap this uh, first session up that I missed to tell you is there's a little micro switch on the Arduino itself over there. And that's just a reset switch. So I mean, if you want to, obviously when you pull the power out, your code stops running. When you plug the power back in, whether it's for via USB or the actual power socket, 
it'll then run its little bootloader. It's got a little bootloader on the microprocessor and it starts running the code. As you can see, it's flashing. But you can also just push that LED and you saw that little flash. It's then rebooting itself. It obviously happens very quickly, but that's a little reset button. Okay, so I dearly hope that was uh, of help to you in terms of st uh, getting started. If you've kind of progressed beyond that point, then hopefully the next videos in the series will be uh, of far more use to you, where we start getting into the projects, start going through the code and understanding why certain things work and why they don't work. And as I said, in the next one, we're going to cover off the digital voltmeter, where I've added a bit of functionality for min, max, average. We're going to go through, and I'm right. We, for that first project, it'll actually, you can use this uh, voltmeter to output to the computer display, the terminal, or there's a terminal, serial terminal monitor that I'll show you how to use. And then we'll understand the challenges I had with trying to display out to this serial enabled uh, liquid crystal display. And that unearths a whole lot of topics in terms of hardware libraries and understanding the different types of variables the, the different types so that'll uh, there's a fair bit of learning that'll happen in the next exercise in the next video so please i dearly hope this has uh, probably been quite a long video uh, and perhaps by design because i feel that if you are really into this series it means sitting down listening and under understanding all the potential hiccups and headaches that you can have but all the potential fun that can come out of just being persistent uh, and enjoying this platform I think will uh, certainly yield a lot of fun and entertainment going forwards. So if you do enjoy this series please let me know. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into in particular to making these videos so if there's not a lot of people following them or there's not a lot of value gained out of them then it's pointless continuing this because there's loads of other videos I could be doing. So do let me know Please uh, rate them, give them a thumbs up, and certainly if you have any queries or comments, then certainly post them down below. And also on my forum, I'll be adding an area there once we start uh, producing the first projects, what have you, where code can be posted. And as I said, there are people who already uh, are involved in Arduino projects on the forum, so certainly go and check it out there. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you soon with the next video. Ciao.